Let me, let me uh, jump straight into introducing Dr. Susan Hodgkinson. Uh, Dr. Hodgkinson is a neurologist and researcher based at Liverpool, at Liverpool Hospital here in Sydney, who will describe the treatments that are currently being tested through clinical trials. In addition, we'll hear of some of her own exciting research about the regulation of the immune system that may one day also generate alternative treatments. Dr. Susan Hodgkinson has a number of clients, in fact, I think over 200 clients in her practice and is also a very experienced researcher, as you'll see. So if, I can, if you could give a warm welcome to Dr. Susan Hodgkinson. Um, thank, thank you, everybody. Uh, wh what I'm going to talk about is just some of the recent developments in clinical trials for, for MS. Um, the, what I first wanted to talk about is just really how, how the, the uh, development of um, discoveries go from right at the beginning through to being freely available, just to sort of recover, uh, to cover that area. And then I'm going to give you some examples from each one of those so that you can um, sort of have a feel for what's happening. Um, and talk about a little bit the time that it takes in each one. So the first thing is a preclinical phase, which uh, where I'll talk about our work, um, and you you hopefully find some agent that might be really useful. And um, the overall estimate of time there is just years and years. And some of these things people have been working on for 20, 30, 40 years. Um, after you actually find something that is really important, there is a, an extra little preclinical phase that is very expensive, and that is that you have to do lots of toxicology studies and you have to test it in primates. Um, and that bit also takes about two years. Um, then, um, then you come to what's called a phase one study, which is the first time a, a drug is administered to human beings. Um, the question that people are asking, I don't know why that's not up, my slides aren't there, yeah, okay, is, is, um, is, is it safe to give to humans? So some, some medications, some drugs actually fail at this level, they're not safe. Um, there's, a, there's quite a lot of rules about how you do phase one studies. You really can only give the agent to one person at a time in the world, um, at least for the first four times that you give it. And then after that, you, can, you still only can give it to a few people. Once upon a time, when I first started, uh, the first phase one study I did, um, we only could use people with very serious malignancy who also volunteered for it. Um, sometimes they have phase one studies where the person has to be a human, a, a well and healthy person. Um, now, um, just uh, in the next few months, um, we're going to start a phase one study in, st in uh in Australia, um, uh, there's one centre in, in Sydney um, and uh, there's some in Melbourne uh, where we're using a, a, a new antibody against a, a product that would help nerves regenerate. So, that's a, so that will be the first time this drug will go into human beings and we're going to actually use multiple sclerosis patients in this setting. They'll just get the dose once and be followed carefully to see is it safe. Um, that, I think that's going to take us uh, um, at least about a year to get that whole study done. Then after that, if it's positive, then what happens is that then things move into phase two. Um, and that's really asking the question, does it work well in the disease? And sometimes uh, people use surrogate markers, so in multiple sclerosis is the um, MRI, have, is it having an effect on the MRI scan, for example. Um, often those studies take two years to, to do. Um, and we're also at that time trying to work out what is the right dose. And some of the, the uh, trials I'll describe are actually in that section now. Um, now, the next phase is phase three studies, which are the very big studies, which use over a thousand patients and are often in multiple sclerosis, multinational studies across the world. And that confirms that it works and tests how safe it is. The, the, um, so I'll, uh, 
I've just mentioned that we'll, I'm going to talk to you about in preclinical work how IL-5 can expand Treg cells. That's the work we're doing. Um, phase one, we're using this special new antibody that we hope will help nerve cells regrow and axons regrow. In phase two, in, in Australia at the moment, there's um, studies going on uh, um, looking at finger myelid, uh, teraflunamide, fumarate, liquinamod, and campath. Now, I'm actually only going to talk about the fingolimod and the cladribine and the campath studies, partly because in addition, um, those studies have also, they've been successful in the first two years of the phase two study, so they're um, being tested in phase three. And actually there's preliminary results available for the phase three studies of the fingolimod and the cladribine, but the campath is a couple of years behind that. And they've started big phase three studies um, on some of these other products, but they're actually several years behind. So the phase three studies take, um, a, they, they run for two years, and of course you've got to actually get people into it, which often takes at least six to 12 months, and then you've got to collect the data and analyze it. So these studies take a long, quite a long time. Um, after you've got a positive result, if you're a pharm pharmaceutical country, company, you have to obtain approval. In the US, it's, you've got to get approval through the FDA. In Australia, we have to get approval through the TGA. And then after that, you have to, in Australia, we try to get funding approval. In, in America, um, uh, the funding process is slightly different. So sometimes the drug is available for more people a little bit more rapidly because once it's approved, it can be available. In this country, the, the approval takes about a year and only after you've got approval can you apply for funding. So it takes about two years. So some of these products won't be available. They may be, fun, uh, they may be approved uh, late next year, but they probably won't be funded until the following year. So um, some of the, those patients are still in those studies. We've got patients with this in Australia, um, and uh, they're still being followed and they're still taking the medication, and they'll be going on and doing that and, and being studied until the drug is approved or even after that to make sure that we're collecting all the data on how well people do and whether there's um, unfortunate side effects. Um, uh, this this uh, medication is a tablet. You take it once a day, um, every day. And it, what, the way it works is that it actually blocks how the lymphocytes get out of lymph nodes so they can't get into the brain and do very bad things. It also probably does other things as well and, and we're all trying to work out uh, all the other things it might do. Now, the next medication that's um, also where we've got a lot of phase two and phase three data, and this is also in the approval state and might be available, um, they think maybe it'll be approved sometime next year and then available, uh, very freely funded the year after, we hope, if the government agrees to fund it, which is sort of disconnected to whether they approve it. Um, this is a medication, this is also a tablet. You only take this tablet several times. You take it a few days a month for a few months. Um, when you take it, this, this medication uh, actually goes to the lymphocytes in your body and uh, kills some of them, especially the T cells and the B cells, and uh, there's many less of them, and that effect lasts a long period of time. And when we look at the phase three results, the relapse rate was reduced to very similar types of numbers to the uh, fingolimod. Um, they had a 50, uh, 54 to 56 percent reduction in relapse rate um, compared to placebo. Um, the side effects of this are um, as reported, there's, there were some infections which, which you would see when people have quite low numbers of lymphocytes, and whether that becomes a problem long term is not actually known. And in the uh, group that received the cladribine, there were four malignancies. 